Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. This is an emergency broadcast. I wasn't going to do a video and post it at this time, but I need to bring you the information. Many people were asking about it. Let's talk about it. What about the potential of a 100 basis point increase in the Fed funds rate? What are we talking about? A 1% increase immediately at the next meeting. This would put additional pressure on everything that we're seeing today, and you know the markets are not going to like that. Will they go 75 basis points? Will it be a soft one at 50 basis points? Who really knows? I'm going to give you everything you need to know today. Let's begin. Inflation rose 9.1% in June, even more than expected as consumer pressures intensify. You probably already heard this news. I posted about it on Twitter. I posted on other places as well. But of course, you look and break it down a little bit further, and it's exactly what everyone knew. It's the same thing from before. Okay, I'm not going to just go on and tell you everything here. You know the drill. What could happen as a result of this? If inflation is getting so hot, what can the central bank do? Well, let's look at Canada and what they did. Bank of Canada increases policy interest rate by 100 basis points, continues quantitative tightening. So Canada is doing 100 basis points. They want to squash that inflation and bring it down. Is that necessarily what the Fed's going to do? No, but it gives you a little bit of an indication. In fact, the markets are starting to price that in. We'll talk about that in just a second. Hang on. Surging prices for gas, food, and rent uh, catapulted U.S. inflation to a new four-decade peak in June, further pressuring households and likely sealing the case for another large interest rate hike by the Fed with higher borrowing costs to follow. So imagine suddenly, especially if it's 100 basis points, especially if it's 1%, where somebody's paying, you know, let's say on a mortgage, Imagine it goes up 1%. Of course, they're not directly correlated like that, but just imagine an increase in 1% overnight. That puts a lot of downward pressure. Suddenly, buyers say, mm, I think I'm going to wait it out. That's what's going on right here, okay? Consumer prices rose 9.6%, and you see that it was up from 8.6%. They expected things to start coming down, but that absolutely was not the case, all right? Look at this. Rents rose in the, in the U.S. last month at the fastest pace since 1986, helping to propel overall inflation to a fresh four-decade high. So this is going on right now. You see more people moving out of their homes. You'll see this. They're going to move and they're going to rent. And that means uh, rent prices could actually go much higher. An index measuring rent of a primary residence was 0.8% higher in June than the month before. So it's actually accelerating. Inflation pain reaches beyond the U.S. Sun Belt as more cities top 10%. So we're seeing this all over the place, but it is, of course, uh, going to be hotter in, in some places than others. I think it just um, shows us that we can have this widespread inflation affecting a lot of different people in a lot of different ways, and it doesn't get better, okay? It doesn't suddenly just, okay, that was it. That's all. That's all good. It stays and it lingers. It lingers. Bond slump as inflation surge fuels bets on 100 basis point Fed rate hike. So you're seeing the yield curve inversion that's taking place. I talked about this before. What is a yield curve inversion? Just think of it like this. I always use this example. If you're going to take a 30-year bond, okay, you're holding that 30 years, you would expect to get a better return than something you would hold for one year. That's an extreme example, right? And what if it was actually the opposite way around? What if it returned a better yield on the one year than it did on the 30 year. Well, that kind of stuff is happening right now. So you know everything is messed up. Look right here. Odds of a 100 basis point July rate hike have now spiked to 68%. The expectation, at least according to the bank Nomura, expectations for the Fed's policy rate path, that they're going to increase and they will you know, stop the last increase, I think it was February of next year. So they're going to stop right there, they're going to keep it at that level, and then they're going to start bringing rates down quite a bit towards the end of 2023. I'm not so sure. I'm not, I don't really think that they can just wait it out for that long. I think we're going to be in bigger trouble before then. And just to give you a little bit of a picture, I know I have people from all over the world, and this is just showing us all countries' inflation rate over 15%. Looking at Lebanon, I mean, 
extreme example, 200 Sudan, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, all of them off the charts. But we also have in here Turkey, 78%, Argentina, 60%, and go down the list. It just shows us that some countries, when they get to these higher levels of inflation, they can't bring it back down. That's just the way it goes. And then we have this global inflation rates. Um, you know, going around the world, you will look at something like Switzerland. 3.4%. But you can see that the US has moved up, or maybe you want to call it down the list at 9.1%. Same as the UK, by the way. Um, you know, up there in the leagues with Spain, Brazil, not too far, and beyond. Okay. Then we have this last one. Fed could weigh the historic 100 basis point hike after inflation scorcher. Futures show one in two chance of a supersized July move. 75 basis points now also in play for Fed's September meeting. And that's something else. So I wanted to talk about this. I'm not sure. So September's the next meeting. There's a big gap in between July and September at this time. If we start seeing inflation, you know, at or around these levels all throughout August, are they going to let it go? Or are they going to increase? Are they going to have, you know, just simply put out a press release? Hey, we're increasing interest rates a little bit more. Hey, we're doing some quantitative tightening a little bit more. We want to make sure this happens. Or maybe it's not necessarily one of those, but something else. So they're tightening in some other way. This could absolutely be the case. And I wouldn't put that out of the ordinary. They can do anything. They can call an emergency meeting at any point. They can do this. So I think we should be aware of all of this. I hope that it was informative to you. I'm trying to bring you the good stuff, okay? I put out this video knowing that when I post the video at this time of night, the views are not good. And that's okay. I don't care. I need to bring you the information. So those, you know, when the algorithm feeds this to you, for those who see it, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for watching this information and do what you can with inflation as best you can, as best you can handle. Grow in a garden, storable food. Uh, you know, carpool if you have to, buy gas at the at the cheaper place using Gas Buddy. I mean, there's there's a million things I've always talked about. Whatever, each and every little thing does help out. I mean, if we go Mad Max scenario, if we go chaos in the streets, uh, of course, you know, anything is in play here. But at least we got to try. We're going to do our best. Okay. So I hope you appreciate that. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.